This is the Shonet admin tool. As you can see, it's version 1.38, so uh, it has some more features than the previous versions. First of all, let's have a look at the different tabs we have in the admin tool. The one is manual control, we have firmware, SD card, settings, setup mode and about. Let's start with manual control. You have the option to project single beams in the different colors. This represent the different color channels. So when sliding the fader for red, you're supposed to output a red beam with green the same thing and with blue and with upping all the faders you get a white beam. This is just for testing purposes, so you can check if each color channel works properly or not. If you have a Shonet Pro attached, you will get three channels more here, as the Shonet Pro supports more than three color channels. Um, this is only for very professional laser systems, so most users do not need them. Here you can check if the scanners work properly. When projecting a single beam in a color, um, you can move this beam with using these sliders to see if the scanners react and if you can uh, deflect the beam. Further down here, you have uh, control over the DMX features. This window on the right side displays if there's any DMX signal coming in. So if any uh, remote control signal comes in. So if you see values happening here, you can determine from that that there is DMX signal coming in. This uh, also uh, refers to ArtNet signal coming in. Then you have the option to check the DMX out. By using these sliders, you can check the DM out, DMX out. Moving on to firmware. The firmware tab allows for flashing new firmware to your ShowNet interface. No matter if it's an external interface or an internal interface, they all work the same, they use the same tool, and it's also the same firmware, also for the ShowNet Pro. So if you have an older firmware on your ShowNet, uh, just download the latest firmware from laser-interface.com and use the flash button to get the latest firmware. In my case, I already have flashed the latest firmware, but I do this now again to show you how it works. I select the LFF file on my computer, I open it, and uh, it gives you the message that the Shonet is switching to reprogramming mode, which can take a second. So leave the program a second to react, because it, it sometimes takes some time to uh, finalize the flash process. Okay, flash update successfully completed, please wait. And uh, now it says, please restart the LDA interface. It also gives a warning message. Uh, important, please disconnect the interface from power supply and restart. I confirm that, okay. And the Shonen admin tool closes. As soon as it's closed, I unplug the power of my Shonet interface or I uh, switch off the power of the laser, switch it on again, and just give it about, let's say, three to five seconds to boot up. And then we start the admin tool again, and here it is. So what we just did is we just updated the firmware. In the firmware tab, you see IP address, which is the current IP address. I have this shown at in auto IP, so it automatically determined the IP address. That's why it's kind of a, a strange IP address here, which is fine. The MAC address is a unique identifier for this hardware device. Then we have the bootloader. Um, as you can see, it's a rather old bootloader, but it doesn't matter because there have not been any changes to the bootloader. This is just to enable the hardware to deal properly with the firmware. Then we have the interface ID. You normally don't need that. License, it's uh, on show editor. There are more licenses available, which is not required in this case. It's all fine to work with this interface and with different software. Um, so there can be more different licenses. This normally does not affect you. 
uh, it can be important in the future, but it's not relevant for now. So can, you can use this interface with show editor, with a show controller, and with various other laser control software. Um, and of course, uh, with DMX and all these other uh, fancy features the show notes have. The license code uh, field down here is not important for you. This is a special thing if, an, if a developer from us uh, requires you to enter a certain key in there, uh, but uh, normally it's not relevant. It's just for very special purposes. Then we have SD card. Um, the SD card tab allows you to upload and download ILDA files to the uh, SD card inside the show net. So you have a memory inside the show net and you can use these ILDA files. You can create them with a show editor. Show editor is a free software that comes with a show net. You can download it uh, directly from showeditor.com and um, it allows for creation of ILDA files. So you can create your own artwork there and just upload it to the show net. Remember to use the correct file format. There is an uh, information on this in the manual. So please read the manual. It's important to understand how this works. Um, you can load the LDA files back and forth. You see on the left side, there is uh, a lot of files, but these files are not LDA files. So it's not possible to transfer them. Um, but I can just transfer an LDA file this way and I can transfer it the other way. And of course it's um, overwritten, but in this case I can delete that file. Say, okay, I want to delete it and it's not there anymore. And I can select it on this side and upload it again. And it's back up here. Uh, if you want to change the folder, just click here and then you can select the folder on your computer where you want to get the files from. So this is uh, an easy one. Let's move on to the settings tab. The settings tab allows for setting different options to your show net device. Um, first of all, we have two different DMX operation modes. There is the DJ mode and there is the professional mode. There is a difference between those two. Standard is DJ mode. Um, it has some pre-made animations, especially uh, for rotation effects and all this. We don't have this in the professional mode. The professional mode is uh, more specialized for uh, console operation, uh, especially if you want to use effects generators and something like that for DMX control. The professional mode is the way to go. Um, there is uh, personalities, uh, profiles, fixture profiles available for ShowNet devices uh, for the main consoles in the market. So uh, just have a look at the website to find all these uh, profiles. We have the option to set different variables here. So for example, if we wanted to uh, change the operation mode, we just click here and then we hit store data. Store data is important. It's kind of safe the settings. Otherwise, if you don't store the data, any change you make here will be lost. So it's uh, important to store data. The store data command is rather special because it writes directly to the microprocessor and therefore it's a similar process like the firmware upgrade. So have a look if I hit store data. It says you really want to write the configuration to the device. I confirm and it warns me again that I need to reboot the system as well. Switches to reprogramming mode. It does the settings, stores the setting, flash update successfully completed and it should give the warning message again and uh, reboot information. Here it is. Okay, so we unplug the power again, replug it in, give it five seconds to boot, and not ready yet, and here we go. Back to settings, let me explain you the different options you have here. First of all, let's start on the right side. 
where there is a drop down where you can s uh, select the source for internal DMX effects. This is uh, the most common application with the Shonet devices if you want to use an external DMX controller uh, or ArtNet controller. You can select if you want to use DMX input or if you want to use ArtNet input. That's depending on what type of control you want to use. If you just have a normal DMX cable with it, use the DMX in port. Any changes here, of course, require the stored data. Then we have a data source for laser show softwares, DMX in. So usually the software that is used with the ShowNet interface can handle DMX signal, so it can be remotely controlled with DMX. And you can select if you want to do that with a DMX in, with ArtNet in, or if you want to merge ArtNet and DMX in. Uh, it depends on the type of software if you can do it with DMX in or if you need ArtNet. So just have a look uh, what type of control and connection you want to use. Here you can set the ArtNet universe. Uh, this sometimes is important um, if you have a um, yeah, bigger setup and you have different universes, make sure that the right universe is selected. On the left side, you have uh, the selection for the physical DMX out of the laser software. So if you want to um, output DMX from the laser show software, then you can select the different options here. You have host as laser show software for physical DMX out. You can do DMX through, which is uh, usually only relevant on the external ShowNet devices. You have ArtNet to DMX, so kind of a ArtNet switch. Um, and we have Merge Host and DMX in Merge ArtNet and DMX in, or you can even ArtNet Player, which is kind of a better status. Um, of course, you can set the scan speed for the SD card playback if you use it in auto mode. And uh, the frame rate, rate is set as static here. Um, it doesn't need to be changed here. You can do that with DMX if you want to uh, use DMX control. Let's move on to the most powerful tab of the ShowNet admin tool, which is the setup mode. The setup mode uh, is very powerful as it allows you for setting up a projection zone, safety zone, color balancing and everything with the ShowNet admin tool. You can do the same thing with DMX. Uh, so please read the manual if you want to do that just with DMX without any computer connection. You can do the same thing with DMX. Just have a look at the manual, uh, the latest uh, fixture profiles and personalities already um, have this built in. So just have a look that all these things we're doing now you can do with the DMX control directly from your console. First of all, let's have some output of the laser to see if it's working properly. I enable output and in my case, I have different uh, patterns on the SD card. I have on 255, I have a test pattern which allows for um, a proper setup of the laser because it shows me the full deflection angle, so the, the, the maximum possible deflection angle and uh, therefore, I can I can make the the proper sizing a proper projection zone, and it's also kind of a, a grid type uh, test picture. So I can see if I set up a safety zone, I can see that properly how high it actually goes. Uh, you can download this special ILDA file on uh, the website that's linked below. Um, so it's uh, free for you to use, and you cannot just upload it with the SD card uploader and use it. So with having this test picture up, you have the option to, to check on different channels. So all these channels here represent the DMX channels you have on, on a DMX console. So it's rather easy for you to see the different options that are available and you can just use the sliders. Do not get irritated that the projection is um, flashing. This is to indicate that you're in setup mode now so this all this control is not meant for live operation of uh, the laser, by far not. It's just for setting up the whole mainboard, the whole uh, ShowNet infrastructure 
to work properly. What you see here is that we have um, a, a preview of the test grid. This is kind of a, a grid. And by using the sliders, you can adjust this grid. For example, I want to adjust the size. You can also use the up, down, left, right buttons on your keyboard to adjust the size or the, the slider values. And um, I can now set up a projection zone. Um, and I want to put that a bit higher and scale it. Um, besides that, uh, I want to have a safety zone. So an area where the power is reduced. So for example, an area where I hit the audience and I want to have reduced power. And you can see I can do it from top down, bottom up, left, right. It's different options. So in this case, I want to have uh, power reduction. You see how I can reduce the power. So in this case, it's less power at the bottom end. And um, I think my, my colors are mismatching, so it's a bit too bluish, my laser. So what I can do is I can reduce the blue value of the laser, and I can also do some trapezoid geometric correction or some pincushion correction, depending on what you want to do and what you need. Um, this is possible here as well. So uh, just have a play and make this all match the requirements you have. This is basically the global setting for your laser. So everything you set up here is the global framework for whatever you do. If you use a DMX control, if you use automatic control, a sound to light control, if you uh, just go with ILDA, if you use ILDA streaming, so all the different features that Shonet has, no matter which feature you use, this applies to the feature. So by shooting any content out of the Shonet, it just stays within the zone you set here. So this is important because it allows for safe use of DMX, for example, in a live environment. It allows for safe use of automatic and sound to light mode by setting up this properly. That's why uh, it's such a cool feature you have inside the Shonet admin tool. And you can do the same thing, as I mentioned previously, with DMX. So by just using a DMX console, it's on channel 24 and 25. You have some features you can use for setting up all this with your console. So please see the manual. There's a link below the video um, where the manual can be found. Check on the manual, check on the DMX chart to understand how this works with DMX. It's, it's so easy to use and you can use it on big stages uh, without, uh, without any problem. To store all the settings we have done now, uh, hit save. By doing this, the settings are stored inside the show net. So when closing the admin tool and opening it again, going back to setup mode, you see the settings we've just done are preserved and are inside the show net. So this is it with the explanation of the show net admin tool.